Today on Locked On Red Wings, Magnus Helberg recalled to Detroit. Does he get starts over Nedeljkovic? Robbie Fabry out of a non-contact jersey. Where does he slot in the top six when he returns? And previewing the game against the Carolina Hurricanes. You're Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a podcast producer for the Daily J, WWJ News Radio podcast. Well, Scotty is host over at Locked On Tigers, as well as a freelance journalist for the Detroit News. And it is a happy victory Monday as the Lions are very much in the playoff conversation. That's right. Uh, so, um, Lions country. Let's right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> don't put that. Don't put that juju on us. That's for sure. But uh, in Red Wings land over here, go across the street to Little Caesars Arena. Got some news and notes for the first couple segments. Conversation number one we're going to have will be regarding Magnus Helberg. He has been recalled from his conditioning stint in Grand Rapids. Put up impressive numbers. I believe a 933 save percentage somewhere in that wheelhouse. Somebody will correct me in the comments. Uh, in his uh, two weeks down there in in Grand Rapids or up there in Grand Rapids, down in the AHL, up in geography. But I always say down there just in reference to the level, not the yes. geographical location. Yeah, that's yeah. always what I do too. Absolutely. So the question becomes, when talking about Magnus Helberg on the NHL roster, because I think you're still at 22 active players just because of all the crazy injuries that yeah. you've had, you can carry three goaltenders. And I think right now you might need to because of the level of play you've been getting out of Alex Pedelkovic. At what point do you say, we need to give Vili Husso a rest. Let's start Magnus over Alex Nadalkovic. Are we approaching that point or have we already crossed that threshold? I don't think you carry three goaltenders without the intent of playing all three of them at some point. I think that that is... That's not a necessary thing to do if you don't plan on at, and at least giving Magnus a game somewhere. I, I don't think there's any purpose in doing the move without that. Um, I will say that I'm I'm definitely not in the boat of like, it's like Ned has lost the backup job already. And like, that's what this move signifies. I'm certainly not there yet. I think that if anything, this will cause some sort of a competition, whether it's at practice or whether it's, I don't, I don't, I don't know how often you play him, man. That, that, that is like the question. Like how often do you play Halbert? I, I would say, I don't know, like the next time that Huso needs a day off, do you immediately just go to him? And then based on that performance, then you start juggling in, like how much does Ned play and how much does he play? Like, I, I just, the, the timing has to mean something like they, they could have just left him down there and he could have just kept starting in Grand Rapids and you could have just been going along like business as usual. And then like, if Ned had three more like terrible outings, then you, you know, pull the plug and you're like, okay, let's like make a switch, but they're carrying all three for a reason. And they did it now for a reason. And so I, I don't know, part of me thinks that the next time Huso needs a break, it's going to be Halbert. But I also don't think that Ned is just like forgotten and like an afterthought either. I don't think he is. If anything, I think you use this as a an opportunity to be like, and it's funny because we're talking about a, a competition for the backup job. Like, how many NHL right, have yeah, ever absolutely. said that before? But I do think it's needed because I don't think Alex Nadelkovich has played all that well. And I think sure. that at the very least, this will light a fire under his ass that, okay, I need to get my mental straight and come out there and actually put a full 60 minutes together. Cause that's really what it seems like the problem is, is, and we talked about it after the most recent game, a lot of goals and bunches out of Alex Nadelkovich. And it's just, it, it's tough to watch. And, you know, we we're cheering for Ned because we think that he has at the very least, he's an extremely athletic goaltender and a good puck handler, but you know, some of it's the fundamentals. And I think and some of it is the mentals. When those two things go South, you let up goals and bunches. So I think giving Magnus Helberg the time of day, like being like, okay, I, I don't think they claimed him off waivers for nothing. I don't think that was the intent. I don't think you claimed him off waivers to be an AHL goaltender for you. I think Steve Eiserman recognized the problem and said, 
if worse comes to worse, he can fill that role. And I, I, cause you look last year, he had one star for the Red Wings, the final game of the season. It wasn't necessarily a great game. He had an 870 save percentage. He allowed three goals on 23 shots. He's bounced around the league so far this year. He started with Seattle. They waived him because they thought for sure he was going to get sent down to their AHL team. He got claimed off waivers by the Senators, put up an impressive performance with the Senators, where he had uh, 29 saves on 31 shots for a 935 save percentage, got claimed back off waivers by the Kraken, but they had to send him back through waivers again because another team had also put in a claim for him. And so the Red Wings picked him up. And the Red Wings had him sitting on the bench, sent him on a conditioning stand, and he tore it up and, well, tore it up as much as a... I guess he prevented the other team from tearing it up. I guess is the best way of phrasing it for a goal. No, he was great though. But yeah, yeah, he played well. He's clearly better than a Grand Rapids uh, or an AHL goaltender. Now the question is, can he stick in the NHL as a backup or is he a fringe? I think he deserves the shot just solely because Nedeljkovic has not been playing up to snuff lately. And like I said, worst case scenario, this works as a as a fire, you know, an an ignition switch underneath. Alex Nelkovic has asked that he has got to pick his game up. And if it doesn't, well, now you have Magnus Helberg you can lean on. I absolutely think that Magnus Helberg deserves some ice time in these games up ahead when Vili Husso needs a break. Because Vili Husso is going to need a break so we don't get that performance out of him that we got in his sixth consecutive start. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I think it really just comes down to how to manage it more than anything. Like, again, I, I don't think you – call him up and use a roster spot to carry three goaltenders just for like the fun of it. I, I, I think that I agree with you. I think there's definitely intent in calling him up and yeah, I'm really leaning towards just giving him the next who so day off. Yeah. And see how he performs. And like, if he struggles too, then like, okay, maybe it's, it's more of a, a back and forth thing, or maybe he'll, get sent back down pretty quickly after that or whatever. But I mean, if he shows out in that game and then you start having to really play the, you know, trying to big brain everybody like managerial side of how often to play all three of these goalies. And obviously, like you said in the beginning, it should be reiterated that this is very much who sows in that and, and the competition uh, in that is very much for the backup goaltender, but I don't know, man. It's, it's, I, I really do struggle with if he does well in, and you give him the next who so day off, how often do you like, how do you juggle the two of them after that? And is it a, cause if you're doing every other who so day off, I mean, you're talking about like weeks in between yeah. potentially outings in that. And, and I don't know how good that is for anybody either, you know, if, and that's the hang up. Right. Like, how do you how do you expect Ned to take steps in the right direction or how do you expect uh, I, I don't know, like, how do you expect either of them, I guess, to really like stay hot and, and stay like sharp and and like ready to go when you'd be potentially giving them, I mean, legitimately like two, two and a half weeks potentially off of like in between appearances if you're just going every other who so off day. No, I completely agree. That's that's the big hang-up is whether or not it's worth it to flip-flop them on who shows off days because, like you said, that could go that could be two weeks in between starts for either goaltender. Right. How does either goaltender really prove themselves? But you're also not in a position right now where unless you just full-on embrace, like this is not the year yet, and you just embrace you know, kind of sliding back in the standings, you can't go – Otherwise, you can't go back to back with your two backups that are battling it out. That's right. just yeah, exactly. that you, you, right now you're in the playoff chase. So you want to have Uso starting. So that's the real hang up. But like as it stands right now, I think Magnus Helberg absolutely deserves a shot. He's hungry. He wants it. He talked about it the other day that Magnus Helberg came back to America because he's, he really believed this was his second best chance at ever sticking in North America, whether that be in the AHL or the NHL. He wants, he has the hunger. He wants to prove himself. And I say, give him the opportunity with how Ned is playing. And worse comes the worst. And I don't understand. I, I'll be straight up with you guys. I don't understand how conditioning loans work. I don't know what the rules are to be able to send a player down, like how many days they, they have to not be playing. If the NHL just, NHL general managers just have the right to do so. But maybe Ned could, do, could use a conditioning loan. Cause remember, they stay on the NHL roster, they don't get sent yeah, to yeah. Grand Rapids. They're on the NHL roster playing for Grand Rapids for 14 days. So, I mean, maybe Ned could use that to get his confidence back. And in the meantime, you have Magnus. But 
I don't know how that works. I don't know if that's possible. My point being is right now, with how Ned is playing and with the fact that you have Magnus, give him a shot. See if he can give you a better chance to win than Ned. I'm still rooting for Ned. I'll always root for anyone who plays for the Red Wings. That's the thing is I'm never going to root against the Red Wings actively. I might root for them to get the number one overall pick, but when it comes to game to game stuff, I'm going to be rooting for them to win that individual game. That's just how it, it works. I'll always root for Ned, but just based on play, I, I'm completely 100% okay with giving Magnus that start. Yeah. I mean, why not? You got to try something. I'm you got to. You. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about Robbie Fabry. He is now skating with the team in Red Wings Red, not Powder Blue. And we'll tell you what that means if you don't when we come back. But first, I got to talk to you guys today about Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to college bowl season to basketball and World Cup. We've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. They're the fastest and easiest way to get all your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts. Segment two, Locked on Red Wings podcast. Scotty and I are uh, in the process of transitioning from Magnus Helberg to Robbie Fabry. Uh, he was wearing the Red Wings red at practice for the first time since his surgery in the offseason, and that means he is no longer in a non-contact jersey. His timeline is still slated, Scotty, however, for the new year, which is a which is right on pace, right on time for what we are expecting. He obviously signed that new three-year extension last season. I believe this would be the first year of that extension. And Robbie Fabry is somebody I was very high on, and I was devastated when he got that ACL injury, his third of his career, that's a tough, that's a tough ass to ask him from to come back from that. And I don't know if it's a silver lining or not, that it was his opposite knee this time. I mean, now he's torn ACLs in both of his knees, but my point here being is he's coming back. I'm excited for him to come back. I hope he's back to full strength. The, the question is where in the forward core in that lineup, does he fit? because the Red Wings have a plethora of injury, but at full strength, they're a deep offensive team. Yeah, I think this is one of those conversations that every time somebody like returns or becomes healthy again, and like this, this conversation changes pretty dramatically. Like as it stands right now, if he were to come back today, I think you have five solidified spots in the top six and it becomes pretty easy of like Fabry would just play the wing on the second line but I think then once you get into January and you get Bertuzzi coming back and and you get uh, well I mean there's honestly a, a, a plethora I mean Soderblom you would think eventually um, I guess we don't know and we'll probably never know the ins and outs of the Verona thing but uh, you know if that happens this season then you have that there's just there's so many possibilities of of infusion of talent still as the season goes on that um, I, I think right now I mean like in the last against Dallas like you had Pew Suter at second line winger I, I think that it's pretty clear cut that like Fabry even if it's not like first game maybe they want to ease him back into it type of thing you know first couple mm -hmm. of games or whatnot. Uh, maybe he starts down lower, but I think it's a pretty easy fit to just put him at, at second line winger for the time being. I think it really gets tricky once you get like Burt back and, and et cetera. I, I completely agree with the team's roster as it stands now with the injuries that are happening. I mean, the next closest player going to, who's going to return is going to be probably Tyler Bertuzzi. We don't know what's going on with Philip Zadina. I don't think we've got an update in a while. Right, we knew yeah, he was out for a while. Matt Luff is obviously hurt, but he might get sent down to the AHL when he gets healthy. Um, he wouldn't. He wouldn't take a top six position anyway. No, absolutely in, not. In the sense of like Fabry, yeah. And Verana, obviously, that's you know he's got his own individual timeline. He'll be back when he's back, and you know we're not gonna you know put any predictions or hope right, any hope yeah. on it. He might be done for the season, and that's a reality. Some of you guys might have to have to come to because this kind of thing, it's not like a two week in player assistance and you're done. Some, some players, it takes a long time. Yeah, to come just, back. I mean, just no one knows. That's really all there yeah. is to it. Yeah. Um, but so you look at the roster makeup right now, I think I'm in complete agreement with you. Uh, Robbie Fabry slot right back in there at second line left wing and bump Suter down. Not that Suter's played poorly. 
I think Suter's done. He's actually been since moving to the wing. He's yes. been really good. Yeah. And I think you know they've they're asking a lot out of him to play second line winger, and he's risen to the occasion. He hasn't been phenomenal by any stretch of the imagination, but he's done the job. But I think Fabry's a better option at second line winger. He doesn't play great defense, but he's pretty good in the offensive zone. Where Suter's kind of the opposite. Uh, they're actually, but <laughs> I mean that that gives you the opportunity and the mobility to send somebody like Zarnik or Bergen down, or even keep them on the roster. Cause right now, like I said, I think you're only carrying 22 guys still with Magnus on the roster. I could have miscounted. It's completely possible. I've always been really bad at math. Regardless um, though, either way, I mean, you, you, you then have like an easy, like, option of you can expend a goalie like you don't have to carry three everybody is aware of that so it, it like no matter what the number is like you have the flexibility to to add without taking away a, a forward yeah, absolutely so i think it's a it's an easy decision to put him back on there now when we talk about what happens when players get healthy Right, and that's the thing. Like, like still including excluding Vrana. Let's still exclude. No, him. for sure, I, I agree with that. But I, I'm saying not even. We don't even have to do like everybody. I, like Bert is supposed to come back. What Probably. within like a month of the same time period? Like within yeah. like within three again, weeks. Come of, back again. Right, like <laughs> like within a, around same ballpark as uh, what Fabry is currently slated to to return at. So. I think that the conversation really is like when Bert is back, what happens to Fabry? Because that mm -hmm. I, I think, I don't know. I think he's a third line winger, which is like not a bad thing at all. I agree. Um, but I, I don't, you, I don't think you move Kubalik down. Uh, the center is in the top. I don't know. Like Fabry's not going to play two C for you. Uh, that's going to be Copper Rasmussen. And like That's everybody crazy. else is, is a solidified like top six winger at that point. And, and so I, yeah, I think that is the question of uh, not question, but answers kind of that situation. When Burke comes back, I, I think you're talking about Fabry on the third line, which is not a, a slight on Fabry. Mm -hmm. And honestly, is not even a negative comment. Like that's just, that speaks to something we talked about coming into the season about how this team was going to have nice depth and, when healthy, they are. And so it would honestly just be kind of nice to see, like, get to that point where we're actually being able to utilize that depth. And, you know, Fabry was a was a second-line winger last season when the extension happened, and now, would you know, we'd be talking to him as a bottom six forward. I think that would speak more to the depth than anything about Fabry individually. I 100% I agree with you. You know, talking about coming into the season, we were not sure if Fabry had a role on the team once uh, he got healthy because of how deep it was. But now knowing what we know, Zadina had no points in nine games. He had good, his, his possession metrics were really good. Now I'll could still continue to hammer that home. Good defense too. Yeah. Good defense. And he wasn't converting on his attempts, but he was getting a lot of opportunities, but as it stands right now, like he was getting healthy scratch. So Fabry, you would imagine slots over him. Obviously he slots over Luff. Uh, he slots below Bertuzzi, so he'll get moved down to the third line. But again, that's not a slot, a slight rather. You know, I think Zarnik just gets sent down. So, like, if Bertuzzi gets healthy, you know, Bertuzzi plays two second line, like you said. Fabry plays third line. Zadine is a healthy scratch. Zarnik gets sent down, and Luff gets sent down when he's healthy. And I mean, I think right there, that's that's it, and that's that's a good. Assuming that Bertuzzi can come back and 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 play well, as he was kind of invisible his first year second stint of the season on the roster yeah. after the first injury before the second injury. It was right. Kind the of return invisible. of injury one. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you're looking at a Perron, Larkin, Raymond, Bert, uh, Bertuzzi, Rasmussen, Kubelik, or you can flat flip flop those wingers if you want. Then you have Fabry, Cop, and Sunkvist, Bergren, Valeno, and you know, whoever else you want to slot in there, Ernie. I mean, well, that's, I think that's that not bad. Also, you know, that's January. Like, the closer you get to the trade deadline, that sets you up in a really – that's a whole different rabbit hole that we definitely don't have time Absolutely. to go down today. But, like, that's that's a conversation that we, we will probably be having as we get closer and closer to the trade deadline. I mean, you're talking about healthy scratching like Zadina and, and players like that. I don't know. That, that, that would yeah. be a really interesting conversation roll trade deadline. I think that Zadina's getting real dangerously close here. And I know he only has like nine games played and then he got hurt. Yeah, we need to get healthy and see what's up first. But I don't know, man. Some of these players, I'm willing to 
like maybe we just like give them a change of location and see if they can produce. Maybe it's just they need a change of location. And I think Zadina might be one of those well, guys. I, I, I like it, a lot what he's doing, but no, I, I mean, yeah, for me, it like all comes down to market and return. I'm not giving yeah. it away for nothing, but no, absolutely not. Somebody wants to wants to take a chance on him and pay a little bit more than maybe his, his market value because they believe the chain of se- change of scenery would help too. Then like, there's a conversation. But when has uh, Steve Eiserman ever gotten nothing for a player? Yeah, true. <laughs> right. Yeah. Two first round picks and a, yeah, but I, my point is like, he's also up. held on to players who literally had expiring deals because of that. Like, yeah. that's my point It's like, that's true. That's not fair. that he would trade him for nothing, but like that he would be, just walk More away. Fine, maybe to just keep but him. Rather, he's also on a contract, so he's not going to walk away from anywhere. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. So when we come back, we'll preview the game against the Carolina Hurricanes and whew, tough stretch for the Red Wings. We'll talk about that when we come back. So stay tuned to Locked On Red Wings. Segment three, Locked On Red Wings podcast. We're going to preview now the Carolina Hurricanes matchup, and uh, you know, you talk about maybe getting net a game in here. Carolina Hurricanes, he played really well against them last year. Was that the 46-game shutty, or was it the 46-game Oh, I think goal? it was the shutty. Yeah. It was either them or Boston. He had two really good uh, impressive performances, but when he let in one goal, when he let in zero. I'm pretty I'm sure the, the Canes was the shutty, man. Yeah. The one oh, yeah. the the uh the one that I I predicted, by the way. Oh, okay. Down uh, to the shot total. You did, and that was, and we didn't even realize it until somebody added us. Yeah, like, one of the listeners had to be like, "I'm pretty sure you predicted this." <laughs> we had to go back and go back to the tape. But uh, Carolina Hurricanes are 15, six and six in the Metropolitan Division currently. Uh, their scoring leaders are Martin Neches, they 28 points and 27. Sebastian Aho, 27 and 26. Andrei Svechnikov, 26 and 27, and then it kind of drop, drops down there. Brent Burns, 20 at 27. But goaltending wise. They've had three different goaltenders play this year. They got Piotr, P- Piotr, Piotr. It's one of those Russian Peter names. Um, you nailed it. Koch, Kachuk, talk, I know they just call him Coochie, and I'm just going to call him Coochie. <laughs> uh, Coochie's got a 9-18 save percentage so far this season, 11 games played. Ante Ranta and Frederick Anderson are splitting the backup rule, 8-9-4 and 8-9-1 backup, percentage, or backup save percentages, respectively. So, I mean, you kind of want – you kind of want the uh, backup in this game <laughs> in, the, well, in this yeah, time. Yeah, in fact, one of those guys of every game, yeah. <laughs> injured. Uh, let me check on that because I just want to make sure I have my facts straight for you guys. Cause as I'm saying that that just doesn't sound right. Um, yeah. Frederick Anderson is back at practice waiting Walt Ruff on hurricanes official site to find out if he is going to be back for good. Uh, That was on December 8th. So Frederick Anderson was injured, could be returning soon. So yeah, he was injured. So you might, you might see him as he was their starter up until that injury. But uh, I just wanted to get that, those facts straight for you guys. So yeah, you have three different goaltenders you could see, but anyways, talking about the team itself and how they're playing Scotty, this is a really tough matchup for the Detroit Red Wings and on on a tough stretch. Yeah, it is Uh, big time. This is one of the, better defensive teams in the entire NHL. Uh, They don't. And like the goalie situation has been, like you said, has been kind of fluent and they've had a a few different names in net for sure. But this is a a really, really good defense that does not allow a lot of shots. And because of that, they do not allow a lot of goals. And it's much more due to the defense than it is, you know, like having a Vesna winner in net. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a toughie, man, especially for a team that, again, as we've reiterated a lot, has trouble with five-on-five five constant pressure in the opponent's zone. This is a situation where, you know, they already limit shots a lot, as is, and I'm not sure how much of a recipe for success that is against a team that – Well, for the Red Wings' sake, I guess the way that our offense operates and just like all the fast rushes and and everything, I I don't know. I I don't know if that's really a recipe for success there. But, uh, yeah, I I would agree with you. It's definitely a tough matchup. They also are in the same boat as the Wings. They don't take very many penalty minutes. So we might see uh, not a lot of special teams, and I say that. So naturally, there will be a (laughs) million pims in this game. But... uh, (laughs) Because that's just how it works. But 
I don't know. Like it, it really, it could be a, a low, a, a low shot total game, maybe for both sides, to be honest with you. I mean, this defense that they have, it's one, they have three players on their offense who are a point per game or better, which is really tough to deal with to begin with. And then you look at it and you look at, you said goals there in the, the, at five on five, they don't convert a lot. I think you said they're 25th in the league at goals four at five on five. Is they're 25th that right? in goals for total. Yes. But total. then they're sixth in the league in goals against the game. So yeah. Yeah. Fair but unit, a, a unit for sure. They do shoot a lot. Um, they're, they have yeah. the second most shooting attempts. So think about that guys. They're shoot. They have, they shoot the puck a lot, but a lot of them are not getting it to the, getting to the net. And also a lot of them are not Bottom going seven in. in the league in actually goals. scoring goals for a game. However, they shoot the puck a ton. <laughs> the second most shot attempts in the league right now um, at Corsi four at Corsi against. They have the least amount. The only team with under a thousand shot attempts against so far this season. Yeah. So it's naturally juggernaut defensively. <laughs> as the top team at Corsi four percentage defensive team masterclass. I mean, they make whatever goaltenders probably why Cooch is playing so well right now is just because of the fact that he's behind that stellar defense. Not to take anything away from him. He did great, but oh, it's just like their save percentage crazy. as a team is like pretty middle of the road. Like it's pretty like middle of the pack when you, you know, rank it with like team save percentages compared to everybody else. But they, they still don't allow goals just because they don't allow shots. <laughs> I mean, their their expected goals for percentage right now is 58-34, and that's the second best in the league. So that I mean, you talk about Corsi, you expected goals obviously weights that and tries to assign a value to each individual shot. So they have the second best quality shot attempt percentage at even strength in the league. And then that's not even getting into their special teams. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, they, they are going to be an extremely tough matchup for the Detroit Red Wings. And this is going to be another one of those games like the Tampa Bay game, like the Florida game, like the Dallas game, where your hope, if you're a Red Wings fan, especially with how banged up this roster has been, if you're a Red Wings fan, you are hoping that your team goes out there and puts down a good performance. And I think maybe we were a little bit down on the Red Wings after the Dallas Stars lost because of the gaff and then just realizing the reality that is this division despite a good road trip. But, you know, the Red Wings did bounce back very nicely for the most part against Dallas. They obviously beat Tampa. So you are capable of at least stealing these games. you got to hope that the Red Wings can come out and do that again. you got to hope for more high energy. Thankfully, I believe you're back at home for this matchup. So, you know, this you have an opportunity here to to really get back in the swing of things. Yeah, th you're at home on this one especially, which it helps even more because obviously like most teams in the NHL, you're good at home. <laughs> yeah, well, and again, like energy was not a problem in Dallas. Like the, the only pessimism that came from the, the Stars game was just the fact that, A, like the, the giveaway at the very end, obviously, but situationally more so, it's just like, dang, like this is such a difficult division to really maintain position in throughout the course of a season, man. Like that's that it wasn't really about the, the gameplay itself. And so like, if they, if they come out buzzing again and you know, it's another high energy game, hang, hang, hang with better teams, man. Like that's beat, beat worse teams, hang with better teams. Like well, that's, that's a recipe for, for sneaking into the back end of the postseason. And I was talking, when I was talking about their Corsi percentage, their Corsi four being high and their Corsi against being super low, which is good. Um, if you're talking team defense, that's all at even strength. Um, part of the reason why their goal total, like across all strengths is low is because their power play is abysmal. They have the 27th, right, uh, yeah. power play in the league. The penalty so, kill is like pretty middle of the road too. Like the special teams aren't one spot below the Red Wings penalty kill. They're 15th right, and the Red Wings are 14th, which is surprising that they're middle of the pack considering how good their defensemen are. But I have a, I have a sinking feeling that has to do more with defensive scheme on the penalty kill than it is on the defenseman itself themselves. So also I mean, like we talk about, they, they don't play in a lot of games that involve a lot of penalties, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which like, so, you know what I mean? Like, Yes, their, their power play is not good. The penalty kill is is middle of the road like that. But when you're when you're playing most of your games five on five, well, here here you go. So I mean, like if you're talking realistically about what this team has to do, obviously we talk about mistake free hockey. You need your goalie to show. You need the whole team to show up. I mean, honestly, when you're facing a team like the Carolina Hurricanes, who are on paper just so much better than you, 
But if you're talking about realistic things you can do better, while your power play is 21st, theirs is 27th, your penalty kill is 15th, theirs is 16th, or 14th and 15th, rather. I mean, beat them on the special teams. And then just hang tight on five on five. I mean, I feel like I say that every single time, but that's how this Red Wings team is good, is built to win games right now. Because they're not like there at five on five yet. defensively. Like, yeah. like if, you, if you can score a goal or two on the power play and then just focus your five on five energy on defense because you know you're not going to get a ton of shots offensively, anyways, there you go. Like, I, that, let's, let's, go, let's go win a hockey game. Also, I know it's hilarious that I spent the entire first segment saying we should start Magnus next if give Huso a day off, but because and it's then Carolina. You immediately said, let's go to Ned. Well, I mean, because it's Carolina. <laughs> I, I, I'm, hey, okay I'm not with disagreeing it. with you. Just I because I think there is a little bit of a, an edge there, and that would be a great game for him to get his confidence back if he can go out there and just punk his old team again. Uh, but so, but other than that, I mean, realistically, I think it's probably going to be Huso. But if you, yeah. this would be a good Ned game if you wanted to give him another one. Uh, so yeah, that's as far as recap goes. That's best. That's the best I got for you preview, guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, preview. I'm trying to look for. There is no odds yet for the over under total in the Red Wings six and, and Carolina Hurricanes game, but we're going to call it six and a half because it's either six and six and a half every single game anymore because hockey is extremely predictable in goal totals. <laughs> uh, will you take an over under of six and a half? Uh, I'll take the under. I think that's actually a, I'm a really safe. three one. I, I think it's going to be a low I'm not going to pick too. a winner, but I'm feeling a three one score. It's going to be a low scoring game as well. Red Wings haven't been scoring a lot of goals uh, lately. So I think that 3 1 is perfectly acceptable. I'm going to take the under as well. So, yeah, that's going to about do it. Any th- final thoughts? Um, I don't think so. We ball. We do ball. So we'll be back tomorrow with a game recap. Same time, same place. It's your team every day. Every day.